What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be recreating the Stranger Things look. And I have to say, I'm very excited about this one because Stranger Things is like one of my all time favorite series across the board. The cinematography, the VFX, the coloring, all around, it is top notch. If you haven't seen it, you gotta go watch it right now. Now, before we jump into this, there's a couple things I do wanna mention. We're just taking a look at one frame from one scene of one episode of this entire series. So by no means is this just the all encompassing look that defines Stranger Things. This is one that I picked out that I thought was a great representation though. It's very warm, it's very 80s, and it just has that feeling that as soon as you look at it, you know it's from Stranger Things, not to mention that you know it's one of the main characters. So a couple things we're not gonna be doing in this video is shot matching to the point where we're changing the colors of the walls and the hair. We might just do a little bit of hue adjustments to make sure everything fits in the same world, but we're not going to be going in and, and just going crazy with the keys and setting a bunch of qualifiers. What we are going to be doing is taking a look at what makes this Stranger Things shot feel like Stranger Things and then building a look DNA to replicate that that we can apply to 100 shots with minimal shot matching necessary. And then another thing, I can't remember where I heard this, but I did see somebody mention that, that they were kind of peeping over the shoulder of the colorist of Stranger Things and there was only like four or five nodes. So with that in mind, we're going to try and recreate this look in as few nodes as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so let's start off by taking a look at the color palette from this still from Stranger Things. Um, now this is Dustin kind of sitting in his room. It's supposed to be like a little bit somber. At the time of this scene taking place, you know, he's kind of feeling left out, like his friends are just, I guess, too good for him at this point. And it's kind of reflected by the color palette we're seeing here. It's a lot of muted colors. Now there are times in this series where the colors are just super vibrant. The color really does change along with the mood of this series. So if they're going through dark times, you're gonna see darker colors, brighter times, brighter colors. However, they do kind of use that to their advantage. They flip that sometimes. And then in a super dark scene, you know, you see a lot of bright colors. I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but if you've seen it, especially season three, you know what I mean. So to get technical here, our high range is kind of just like this, sort of like salmon, uh, this muted orange. Uh, it's not clean white. It's actually not even that high on the histogram or the parade here. We can see the highest anything gets is like around 896, but we do just about max out on the bottom floor here. So me personally, I love doing that with my own images. I personally love to bring the highest highlights down pretty good to about 75%. Um, that just creates this natural film look. I think it's pretty common in Roger Deakins work and I love kind of working alongside of that. In the midtones, we see again, this prevalent brown. That's kind of common throughout the entire series. You're always gonna see these brown midtones and sort of bluish brown brown shadows. And we see it just a little bit here. They're using that shirt that he's got on, which is kind of like foresty green. Uh, he did just get back from camp. So that's what we're seeing to balance out the shadows. And again, so much of this look is just built on set. It's built in the in the clothes they're wearing and the set design. So if you're going for this kind of vibe, you need to keep that in mind and really do a whole lot of thinking about what you're gonna have in frame whenever you actually shoot it. It's gonna make the coloring process a lot easier. But let's go ahead and take a look at the shot we're gonna be recreating and putting into the Stranger Things world. Okay, it's pretty simple, there's not a lot to it, but the reason I chose this shot is because the, there's this daylight coming in and we kind of see that similar thing on Dustin's arms. We're gonna get to use that to our advantage and then you know she's got that yellow shirt. There's a lot of yellow and brown hues that we'll get to work with. Uh, and then also that plant in the background is gonna give us a little bit of the blue as well as this blanket on the bed. That's probably gonna be the only thing we really adjust the hue of. Um, we're gonna probably match that to Dustin's shirt just to kind of make it feel more similar. And I think that's gonna really help sell the look. All right, so let's go ahead and start building this look out. Uh, first thing I wanna do is take our offset. Again, always, always, always we're starting with exposure. We're gonna pull this offset down just a little bit. And that's gonna give us a better starting point whenever we wanna add contrast, which is what we'll do now. So we're just gonna bring this contrast up and we wanna keep it pretty subtle. I don't wanna crush the shadows too much. And then using our pivot, we're gonna kinda of change that center point. And I do kind of, I want the skin to be pretty soft. I don't wanna just you know crush those shadows like in our eyes right there. So we're gonna bring this back a little bit pivot sitting around 0.19. All right, now let's further modify that. Let's pull down on our lift and then pull down on our gain and then up on our gamma, bring those mid-tones back there. And that looks pretty good. Now let's, let's add some saturation now. All right, now we're halfway there. Again, this just goes to show a lot of this look is built from what you have on set and what you're capturing in camera. So like I said before, we wanna do this in as few nodes as possible, uh, cause really this look is simple. There's not a lot going on there. It's pushed, but it's not pushed with a hundred qualifiers. It's pushed properly. So we're gonna look at how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and label this node. I've got my keyboard here cause I hate reaching over it and working on the panel. So just don't mind me, I'm just gonna be typing away right here. Uh, we're gonna name this one our contrast. Then we're gonna make a new node. This is gonna be the start of our look. We're just gonna call this one balance. 
I think we're really just gonna limit it to like four effective nodes if you don't count the sharpening, noise reduction, and the grain. Add another parallel here, and this one's gonna be our hue. This top one's gonna be our look. That's where we're gonna use our primary wheels to really put this in the same ballpark. And then uh, we'll just have one more after this to do any global adjustments to what we have here. So our balance, referencing that, that color palette we had pulled up, we did see like the, the skin tone kind of came through into the highlights and we're gonna keep that going. We're gonna keep that alive here. We're gonna push a little bit of yellow orange into the highlights. Again, we're using our primary wheels here and we're just subtly pushing this in there. Then we're gonna take our gamma, also gonna push this fairly towards this yellow orange area. We go too far and then pull it back. And let's see, our shadows, if you look at the image on the right, most of the image kind of just sits lower and then you know his face kind of pops off the screen and really separates him from the back wall there. Um, and that's kind of mostly just through exposure. So we're gonna try and recreate that the best we can here. So in our balance node, we're gonna keep pulling down on our gamma. We're gonna do a little bit more exposure adjustments, but this is kind of more creative. Just gonna keep pulling this down. I wanna kind of match exposures the best I can here without you know, breaking it. I still want it to look realistic. Pull up on the lift, down on the gamma. That's looking all right. We're done with the balance node. Let's go ahead and make this kind of blanket here, this blue kind of match Dustin's shirt a little bit better. So we're gonna go into split screen mode. If yours is set up on the horizontal swipe, you can change how all that looks up here in this top right hand corner of your viewer. Now let's go into our hue versus hue curves. And we're gonna take that cyan, just gonna pull it up and it's gonna make it a little more green. And that's looking pretty good to me. Put the split screen again and that's super subtle. It just kind of deadened out that blue and we don't really see a whole lot of blue other than this picture frame here. Uh, in the original image. So going back into the look, and again, we're keeping this as simple as we can because we wanna make this into like a power grade, essentially. We wanna be able to apply this to 100 different shots if we need to, with minimal changes required to make it fit from one to the next. That's why we're not gonna be pulling any qualifiers and you know, isolating her skin, isolating any shadows, isolating the wall. It's just not doable in a real world project. Uh, most of the time, these turnaround times are super short. So if a client comes to you and says, hey, I need a Stranger Things look, this is how we would attack that. You know, we would pull up the reference image, we would see what kind of makes that DNA feel like Stranger Things or whatever their reference is. And then we would see how can we apply that to our grades? Um, what can we do to accomplish that look in as few nodes as possible? So right here, essentially we're on our third node and we're just gonna continue pushing this image and mainly just using tools that are gonna hold up across multiple multiple shots and aren't gonna require much refinement. So again, the highest highlights are pretty low here. However, I think I do wanna go into the log wheels and let's kind of just balance them out a little more because I think they're a little bit more, I think ours are a little too warm here. So I'm going into my log wheels, and my highlights, and I'm pulling them towards teal to cancel out that warmth that we had. And yeah, just like that, very subtle, but I think it's a big change there. Uh, and then I do want to go back into my gamma because Dustin's skin, you know, on the right side, it just looks so natural. Ours is still kind of getting that warmth there. I do want to pull it back just slightly and then really start working on the shadows here. Now, a big part of creating these professional grades is what's called stacking. That is gonna be you know, pushing several colors on top of each other into different areas, different regions of your shadows, midtones, and highlights. So what I'm doing here, we've already pushed one color into the shadows on the balance node, and then we're kind of stacking on top of that with a look node, and we'll do it again, further refining the look in this look adjustment node, the sixth node here. So already, I mean, we've got a great looking image. Uh, I think you can show this to any client and they're gonna be incredibly happy with it, but let's just continue pushing it as far as we can, um, seeing if there's any final steps we can do to make this look even better. Let's go into offset on our last node here, and we're just gonna kind of move this around and see where it looks best, see what this image really is asking for. And man, really just depending on what your client wants, I mean, if they're, we've kind of got the Stranger Things look here. Uh, this is looking really good in my opinion, pulling a little more towards blue or teal. Um, and then we can counter that with just pushing in the gain a little bit more warmth. Maybe the same thing in the, in the shadows here or not. You're kind of just really just playing around with this. And let's go back into our hue node. 
Uh, I do think I think we could push that blanket a little bit further towards green. Just kind of getting rid of any strong blues here. That's looking good. Let's pull the saturation down on that as well. If we wanted to, we could add some vignettes real quick. So if you want to do that, let's go ahead and hop down here. We'll add a window. A lot of times I like to do an inside and an outside node. In this case, we're only gonna be building that vignette with one node. So we're just gonna add that circular window. We've clicked it, didn't pop up. You can just click this square here. Now it's back. And we wanna give this pretty good size. I wanna really pull her out as much as we can. And then we'll add a ton of softening. And let's go ahead and invert that. Then we'll go into our curves and grab an anchor here in the middle and then just pull down slightly. And I can see I want to refine that window a little more. I want to make it a little narrower. That's pretty good. And then we could add, of course, our sharpening. About 0.47. And then, because that's the weird thing about Stranger Things is like it's this vintage look, but it is still so sharp. And most of that's because in the third season, at least, they shot it in 8K. So it's on red. It's going to look outstanding. They shoot it very, very well. It's an 8K, but it's also very sharp. And then we add this grain on top of it and it really just pulls the whole thing together. So let's go ahead and go into our effects. We'll add grain. And we're gonna zoom in here, kind of into the highlights is gonna be a good area. And let's select our favorite 35 millimeter 400T. I'm gonna bring that size up just slightly as well as the strength. And now let's just kind of look at the image and analyze it. I think it does look pretty dang similar. Uh, what I do want to do is continue just adding more warmth into the highlights there, maybe as well into the shadows. Kind of playing on this, kind of playing this balancing act between our lift and our gamma. It's looking good. Maybe pull our highlights up just slightly and our lift down. back into our log. Let's go back into the look node here. Put a little more blue into those highlights to kind of make them feel more natural. And let's do one more thing with the exposure here. Grab a point in the middle and kind of pull down on this. Let's see where it sits best. I leave it right here and then a point. Actually, let's go ahead and we'll click these three dots right here and check editable splines. And then whenever we check this lower point here, it's gonna give us this little dot, which we can pull. And that's just gonna help us kind of crush these shadows. I want it to be subtle. I'm actually gonna delete that point there. We're gonna start this over. And that's looking pretty good. Kind of pull this down back towards blue or green and then balance it out with more orange in the midtones. Uh, I think we got it pretty close. And again, I wanna reiterate, this is just a DNA. This is something we can apply to several shots. This is not meant to be something that matches 100%. And the reason I'm doing that in this tutorial is because that's how we would do it in a real world application. If a client requests a certain look, this is how I would go about taking that request and figuring out what makes that look so unique and then how to re-implement it with my own flair on just about any shot. And I know exactly from the ground up what it took to build that look. So I know where to go in and make any changes. So lastly, let's go in step by step and see what each note has done in this look recreation process. So here we have our flat image and we just kind of fixed our exposure and then added some contrast and saturation. And then in our balance node, we got pretty heavy with this. I'm not always gonna be this heavy with my balancing node uh, early on, but in this case, you know, we had what we needed, so we just kind of built off of it. And then we have our look node where mainly we just balanced out the highlights and then our hues. It's a very subtle thing we did here, but a lot of it was just taking that blue blanket and making it feel a little more green and earthy, which you can find across all of Stranger Things. Then we kind of further refined this look here in our look adjustment. And then we added this vignette here that really brought our actress out. Then we just added sharpening and grain. And again, this just goes to show you don't need to overcomplicate things. You don't need to have 100 notes to get a professional creative look. All right, that's a wrap for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to send this to all your friends. I'd super appreciate it if you left a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, and then leave a comment letting me know what kind of videos you want to see next. That's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next video.